greetings to you in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our Lord and our Savior. I'm coming to you today from Jakarta, Indonesia. My name is Pastor Rory Butler, and I'd like to share with you today about the gospel. What is the gospel? Well, I'd like to take us today to the book of Luke, and we want to look at Luke chapter 24, because when Jesus rose from the dead, he sent his disciples out and gave them a message to preach into all the nations, into all the world. So we look in Luke chapter 24, verse 45. It says, Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written, The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I'm going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. So he mentions three key things right here. Number one, he mentions what happened, and that is that the Christ suffered and rose from the dead. Number two, he mentioned the message they should preach, and that is they should preach repentance and forgiveness of sins. And number three, he tells them the means by which they will accomplish their goal, and the means of that is they're gonna receive power from on high so they can go out and preach the gospel everywhere, so they can transmit this message of good news. And I would like to focus today on the message that we are to preach. The message is clear. The message that we are to preach to the nations, the message we are to preach to people in our own country, the message we are to preach to our family members, the message we are to preach to strangers on the streets, the message that we are to go to the ends of the earth to proclaim is twofold. Number one, it's the repentance of sins. We are to command men everywhere to repent, the Bible tells us. We have a responsibility from God a responsibility that we are to communicate to people that what they are doing is wrong, their lifestyle is wrong, their thinking is wrong, and it's ugly in God's sight. It's called sin, and they must turn away from it. That's called repentance. They must change. So we are commissioned with a command to confront people with their lifestyle, with their value system, with the way they're living, and to tell them it's wrong. And so many people are afraid to do that first part. We want to skip over that. We want to skip right to the dessert and tell them all the good parts. Well, I want to tell you, if you do that, you're not being faithful to communicate the message as it was handed down to us from Jesus and from the apostles. They told us clearly, point out what's wrong, communicate clearly. They're sinning, they're sinners, and they must change their lifestyle. They must turn away from the bad and the wrong things they're doing, and they must turn to God and live righteously. If you're not preaching righteousness, you're not preaching the gospel. Because the gospel according to Jesus means you must turn away from a sinful lifestyle and start living a righteous lifestyle. That's the gospel according to Jesus. And so the first part of the message that we must preach, I don't care if you're doing youth ministry, children's ministry, adult ministry, elderly ministry, overseas ministry, uh, cross-cultural ministry, deaf ministry, blind ministry, whatever sort of ministry you are doing, if you are to be a faithful witness of the gospel, the first thing you must must communicate is that people are sinners, they're living a sinful lifestyle, and they must change, and God commands them to change, and now he's going to use you and your mouth to communicate that message. Now, it doesn't mean you have to say it in a mean way, or a harsh way, or some pharisaical, or some, some legalistic type of way, or some holier-than-thou way, but we still must be faithful to communicate the facts. The truth that man is living in sin and he's got to change his life thought or he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. So brothers and sisters, let us recover the message of repentance. It's like sometimes we're preaching a gospel with no, with no punchline to it. There's nothing about it that pierces the heart anymore. It's just a tickle the ear type thing. So let's recover the punch in our gospel. Let's recover that sting of the conscience. Oh my gosh, I'm sinning. I'm wrong. I'm going to go to hell. Amen. Let's preach it as it is. So the second part that we are commanded to preach, that we are entrusted with, is we must preach the forgiveness of sins. Hallelujah. That's the good news. That even though man is a sinner, even though man is unrighteous, even though he's been rebelling against God, which we must communicate, 
Now we have a good news to preach. And that good news is that if you will turn from your sins, God will forgive you this very day. He will cover you. He will clothe you. He will transform you. He will justify you. He'll make you his child. He'll make you a, a son of the kingdom. He'll make you a righteous man or woman of God. And that is the good news that we are to preach. It's a twofold message. It's not one or the other. It must have both sides or it's not accurate and it's not being faithfully communicated. So let us pray preach the good news of God's mercy and God's love. This is the day of the favor of the Lord. It is still the year of grace. It is still the year of the favor of the Lord. It has not changed yet. The judgment and the wrath has not yet fallen in its fullness on the earth. And so now there's still a window. There's still an opportunity. There's still a, an hour where we can freely proclaim the grace of God. The blood of Jesus has not run dry. The forgiveness of God has not run out. The goodness and the mercy of God has not, has not ended yet. But it is still the hour of God's mercy and God's grace. And we have been given a glorious commission to tell people that good news. So brothers and sisters, let us preach the full gospel. Being that we are to command men to repent everywhere. And then we are to, we are to communicate to them the good news of God's forgiveness, His grace, and His mercy. And His grace is sufficient for them. No matter who they are, no matter who you are, no matter what condition you're in, if you will call in the on the name of the the Lord Jesus today, you can be totally transformed and forgiven. Don't let the devil lie to you and say it's too late. Don't let the devil lie to you and say that your sin is too great. Don't let the devil lie to you and say that it's for everybody else except for you. The grace of God is for everyone that still has breath. So I just exhort you, encourage you today to repent and believe the good news. Repent of your sins, confess your sins, and believe the good news and receive God's forgiveness. And brothers and sisters, let us communicate the good news, whether it be on your website, whether it be on your Twitter account, whether it be on your Facebook, whether it be through YouTube, whether it be through your own mouth and your job, wherever you're at, communicate the good news. Command men to repent and tell them about the Savior. That's what we need to do. That's the full gospel. That's the message we're entrusted with. It hasn't changed in 2,000 years and it will never change until Jesus returns. So let us return to the basic message of the cross, that man is a sinner and God is a good God. We must repent and God I will forgive. Amen. I hope that this message has helped you today to recover a balance and know what it is you are to share with everybody that you come into contact with. Amen. So let's pray and may God help us to be better witnesses of the gospel. So Father, I just pray today that you would encourage every brother and sister in the name of Jesus that you would, by your spirit, once again, impart to us that, that holy commandment that we are to preach a gospel that commands men to repent of their sins. It confronts them in their unrighteousness. It confronts them in their sin and compromise. But it also gives them hope and grace and the ability to change and be forgiven and to be justified and to be transformed into your image. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May God bless you.